You've got five minutes, Alfred Grinshaw. Then I'm going. Oh. A good crime must be my lucky day. Alfred! I just had to get my hair done. I thought it was like a forecast of rain and fog and all that. And I thought it would like die off for a bit. And I would come to see you. Uh, you look a bit wet, Yaz. You alright? You look a bit wet, Yaz. Are you kidding me? I've been standing here for almost an hour. Be out the door in your second and don't be late. Oh, it's alright then. I'm here now. Mm. Oh, oh, where are you? You're getting us all wet here. Come I'm on. you wet. You listen here, Alfred. Alfred, whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out, time out. You only call us Alfred when you're cross. <laughs> Alfie. Please? I mean, come on! I mean, I thought you would have used your common sense or something. I mean, what kind of stupid person would come out in the rain without a coat or an umbrella? Mm. Stupid! Stupid! The only thing you forgot is wet. So stupid and wet, is that what you're saying? Okay, right. Look, Yaz. Yaz, can we start again? Stop. Let's not start again. Let's end this right here and now. Alfred Bumshaw, you're dumped. Eh? Whoa, 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 whoa. You, you, you can't dump me. I've just literally just bought two tickets to the customs house and be dissing a whistle drowning with Donnie Peel's story. I've got like gold dust to get a hold of. Do I pay? No, I don't. Okay. Whoa! Ah! Now he's wet, stupid. Ah! Ah! I can't swim! You're not going to see the yeah. stupid Donnie Peel show. Yeah, man, I'm going to drown!
You should never ask a lady what she weighs. Oh, you should never ask a lady her age. Shut up! <sighs> well, it depends. When I'm walking up here, trodding along, I feel heavy. But when I'm in water and floating, I feel light and floaty. So I suppose right now I could be light, or at least lighter than I was standing up there, feeling heavy. <laughs> Yep. No, I haven't ascertained the information yet. What? <coughs> okay, I will. Right, stones and pounds, please. No. Eleven stone, three pounds. And huh? you? Nine stone, pounds. Speak up. <laughs> oh, I can't hear you. Nine stone, 13 pounds. Eleven stone, three pounds, and nine stone, 13 pounds. 21 stone and two pounds recalculated. We have to get going out. And if you're not getting off, you will have to hold on. I have no pen and paper for a disclaimer, so at your own risk, be it. Hold on, we are entering uncharted borders. I jumped. Well, thank you. You saved me. Joshua, it's uh, Joshua. <laughs> uh, uh, where are we, Joshua? God, the current must be very strong. <coughs> ah, subliminal so leap, size of you. Anyway, you must have drifted miles up the river. Daggers. Well, thank you. You saved me. Well, I could have drowned. Ah, well, you drowned. I drowned. We all die. I'm Yasmin. I know. Do? I do. And you should do also. Do what? Wait. No longer. Oh, smoky in here, isn't it? Coal dust in the air. Alcohol. Slave land. Pollution. We made it. Where are we? Lifeboat. Well, not your normal shape, but you did the trick. Yeah. Lifeboat. A man made machine for saving those in peril on the sea. I know what a lifeboat is. First one. Two men fight. Who wins? Who comes second? Who stole the design from who? Stop messing about that board and get in here. Quick, down. <laughs> Do not say a word. Understand? Yes, we understand. No more words. Yes. Not a word. Promise.
Will you eat it in the ice? The bar's getting cold and it's now worse than a cold card. Aye, lass. You're now waiting to do what you could. William Woodhart is getting beyond a joke. This is the fourth time in a row. You lost your senses. Listen, pet. You know that this is important. Ever since all sailors lost their lives when the adventure went down the flat middens. Oh, anyway, don't bother me now with talks of cold cod, will you? Mother was right about you. Don't marry him, can I bring you nothing but heartache? You can shut the cod, and you can pull her off. <laughs> <laughs> You're all right, Willie. Hello, Henry. Don't fancy a fish supper, do you? Ah, don't mind if I do. I just put on the TV, okay? You were to the meeting tonight. I'm busy. Doing what? You must have heard about the competition that's being launched. What competition? Oh, Henry Greathead, it's official. You are a dumpling. No, just a minute, Willie. Who are you to call anyone a dumpling? You must have heard about the competition. They're going to reward the inventor. Well, what have we got to invent, Willie? A boat. A boat. Aye, a boat. But not any boat. A boat with the purpose of saving lives from shipwrecks. Huh? This is my idea. I call it the lifeboat. A uh, what boat? Lifeboat. A boat to preserve life. I think that if it was made out of copper and coal, well, it would be strong and buoyant at the same time. Hmm, so copper and coal, eh? So what does anyone else think of this? Well, you're the only one I've told. So keep your eye hat, will you? Fine, I'll not tell anyone. So what I miss tonight then? Tonight? <coughs> tonight, at the meeting. Um, you've been voted off the committee. Off the committee? <laughs> what for, like? Eh? The others don't think of a good example of how we want to present ourselves. Eh? You're just not posh enough. <laughs> not posh enough? <laughs> What's that supposed to bloody mean? Well, it wasn't me, I wanted you to know that. Well, who the hell was it then? All of the other say say you're vulgar, uncouth, and constantly use bad language. Bad language? I'll give you bad language. I'll knock your drop off your cheeky bugger. And fighting. Fighting? Fighting? I'll show you fighting, you. So don't you say what is all the nice about, and who's that with you? Evening, Hannah. How are you? Henry, is that you? What are you doing acting like a rag muff in our backyard for? Sorry, Hannah. I just got home to news of William, and um, I don't think he took it too well. William would have. I would have thought you'd have a bit more decorum by now if you lost your senses. They've kicked us off the committee for what they say is my bad language and bad behaviour. Oh, you don't say, and you're always such a mad-heeled man like Mac. And you two, stop your squabbling before I block your blocks off. Anyway, I thought you told me you weren't submitting your ideas till the morning. How's it going to look if you show up with a black eye? Aye, you're right, pet. I'm sorry. Sorry about that, Henry. I, I don't know what come over, is it? Uh, no hard feelings, will you? I'll just be off now. Uh, thanks for this, William. I don't appreciate the free meal. I've taken over this design. I've caught my invention, the light boat. I don't know when she's fully finished, she will indeed be a boat that preserves life. I thank you gentlemen for recognising my work and I thank you for your payment. Well, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have an idea here for the soldiers. You're just a bit late there, my friend. I've just been given the Royal Commission as the light boat bill. Why, Henry Greater, you thieving bugger! You know that this was my idea all along. Why I should knock your block off? You, you, you thieving bugger! You. No hard feelings, William. Yeah, take this skinny for last night's fish supper. After all, there is no such thing as a free meal, and I feel it's only fair that I pay you for everything that you gave me last night. Thank you. 
So quickly. We floated up the river to Tyne Dock. Well, there's always been years behind the rest of us. Yeah, can we get the uh, metal home from here? <laughs> what did you just witness? Two blokes building a boat, riveting. Well, there were two blokes building a boat, boat like, but well, it was, but it wasn't. Ah, there was something not right there, like. Yeah, you just get lost. Yeah, get in. We must go. Wait. Home. What good me do there? No, 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 no. Home of the inventor. For every inventor, there is a home to be invented. And a wife behind the inventor pushing him forward to invent. My mum said never to get into a boat with a stranger, but this is getting stranger by the minute. It's a left home and it's free. And she said never to trust boys because they're nothing but trouble. first scientist to become a lord. He was, I mean is, the first person to install electricity into his home. In the home, the wife is the boss. Do not, and I mean do not, interrupt her in her natural habitat. <laughs> manners to interrupt a man in full swing. I'm inventing hydraulics. What's that like? Well, you know, the piston thing. <laughs> William, language! Ah, the piston engine I was working on last week. Uh, oh. What do you mean, oh? I sat on it. Yeah, what? <laughs> well, you left it on me chain. I didn't know sitting the dog. Why don't you invent something useful like lights? What do you mean, useful? What do you think me pissing on hydraulics is? I don't know, but I'm hoping it's a washing machine. Huh? Well, it's a washing machine. How am I supposed to know you're the inventor, not me? So why don't you let me get on and invent? Well, I never have any call for that kind of talk. Look, Margaret, I know you don't understand all this talk of inventing, but us men need to be given our space to get on. We can't spend all our time staring into the fire and thinking. Well, if you're so clever, what happened to that moment we ended up created? Come and tell us that. <sighs> no one paid any attention to it. But that's why I'm selling the hydraulic one. Don't you see? Here, put this away before someone kills themselves with it. I'm working on a field gun for the army. Oh, really? You can't help yourself, can you? To be honest, Margaret, no. I want to make life easier for you, me, everyone, and that's what me work is all about. Okay, now I'm listening then. What is it you're inventing to do? I'm working on hydraulics to move a crane. Hydraulics is the mechanical properties of liquids. It is, is it? Yes. Hydraulics will be used for the generation, control, and transmission of power by the use of pressurised liquids. Taking a cast iron cylinder and fitting with a plunger supporting a very heavy weight. The plunger will slowly be raised, drawing in water, until the downward force of the weight was sufficient to force the water below it into pipes of great pressure. This energy can be used to move cranes and thus load boats quickly. <coughs> you see, this is why I do my inventing stuff while you are at your mother's. It's far beyond your understanding. Now just one minute, William Armstrong. The people think. What people? The people think the coal we dig up for heat and to drive engines will last forever. Right. But it won't. And the oil will drive as well. We have to start looking at wind, water, and the sun. The yeah, natural elements that should be harnessed to use as power. William, you have clone lost your mind. Wind, water, and sun, you see? Aye. Harnessed, you see? Aye, harnessed. How do you propose to get this done then? I don't know yet. I'm working on it. Let us know when you've got a lick then. <coughs> Margaret. I have things I've been working on that I want to show you. Oh, I what's that then? William, what are you up here in the middle of this afternoon? It's not even Sunday. Won't you do that on Sunday after church? Go 
good Lord moves in mysterious ways. <laughs> when water from the high hilltop moves down through the waterfall, it forces the water in the lake to run fast. The faster it runs, the more energy it possesses. I have created something I call Siemens Dynamo. Well, if it's Siemens, how can it be yours? It is the world's first hydroelectric power station. I have used it to power a power plant installed in this very room. William, this is wonderful. Oh, this is fantastic. I've said it all along. You are a genius. You did? I most certainly did. Whatever is the matter, Margaret? This light. It makes us see things I've never seen before. Like what like? Cobwebs. Pardon? Cobwebs. I can see cobwebs. Well, the uh, cobwebs are there if it's light or dark, Margaret. It's too bright. What? The old lantern used to light the room, but not the corner, so it's too... Oh, what do you call it? It's too bright. Too bright? Too bloody bright? I can't win, can I? It's lovely, William, but we do have to think of a way to shade the corners. Shade the corners? How? With a lampshade? Huh? What's one of those, then? Hey? Way, Margaret. That's bloody clever. I've invented the lamp and you've invented the lampshade. May as well have stuck with the lantern, because that didn't like the corners of the room either. You don't get it, do you? Get what? We're a team. A bloody team? Hi. <laughs> you get a lamp in every house in England, and I'll create the lampshade. What? And have people looking in windows and having a laugh at my expense? An invention that will help you see in the dark, but can't be seen? No thank you. Oh no, William. I'll go one better than that. Matching drapes. What? <laughs> what are drapes? <coughs> drapes? Out and the love light in, and every bugger will never know what's going on, even on a Sunday after church. <laughs> Margaret, where are you? Over here, William. I don't suppose you've got a shilling for the meter, have you? William, you haven't invented me as yet, and what's a shilling when it's at home? <laughs> again. Where are we? This is no home. I keep asking you, you keep dodging the question, and I will keep asking until you actually give me an answer. And this spaceship, or space hover thing, hasn't even got a tax disc. Take no notice of him, Joshua. He's just a grumpy old boy in a man's body because his hair's out of place, Jeez. and he looks like a man. It's complicated. I will answer you. Give me a moment. In the meantime, can you two possibly be nice to each other? Not in 108 years. <coughs> Why? Are men so useless? Useless? I'm not useless. Practical, I would like to think. I'm thinking it's not exactly your strong point now, is it? Look at all the things men have thought of so a woman could be happy. Happy? <laughs> like what? Um, lampshades, um, iron boards, uh, curtains. And what are we getting returned? I think you're just about to tell us. Oh. Why am I here? And why is he here? Can't you just make him funny? Disappear at the face of the earth. Unfortunately, I need both of you. I know women think they don't need men, but they do. It's a fact of life. No, don't. It's a fact of life. Yeah, ever since the gift you the boat. <laughs> men, can't live with them, can't kill them. It's a fact of life. And who are you, Joshua? What do you think you're doing, like, taking us when this weird journey is? Or is it just a bad dream? The bit with you is a bad dream. Who is it? Yeah. Well, you see, I am a traveller. But not just a regular traveller, a traveller in time. I come from our future. I came back to stop you two from drowning in the river. <coughs> we have subsequently gone back in time following the oscillating current and Andy pulled us through the river, 
which is intrinsically linked to the intertidal zonal rotation of the sublunar moon, two specific points of historical interest, which are linked to the development and construction of a time machine. <laughs> time traveller. What do you mean, time traveller? And well, where's your time machine? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I give you any food? <laughs> what? Well, this must be piece of junk. Are you kidding me? What do you think you're doing taking us with you? I don't mind, this is getting quite exciting. You're in the boat then. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, exciting. Uh, have you lost your mind? I had no choice. And the choice was either that you drown or take it with me. Which do you prefer? Okay, well done. But now you need to take us back to our home. I can't. I'm looking for something or someone who was instrumental in changing the face of the earth. <laughs> something or someone cannot be more specific than that. Oh, it's time. <laughs> and by the way, the boy isn't a rusty thing. <laughs> well, I guess we have no choice but to follow. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 